Hey, what's going on, everybody? I just want to say thank you guys for coming out. Uh, wanted to actually talk to y'all before you listen to this episode. It's got crazy. I, um, I brought Doc on, the fat doctor, world famous. Uh, you're going to see two old men or listen to two old men not be able to figure out technology. So I just wanted to, I, I tried to fix it up as much as I could. I love you guys. Thank you guys for listening uh, to the podcast. As you know, this is actually a Facebook uh, live show, and we just go ahead and just throw it all out there. Whatever happens, happens. So I wanted to explain exactly what you're going to listen to before you listen to it. But thank you for uh, your support. I appreciate it. And here's the show. What's going on, Clay Thomas? I know it's late, but I had to get it in. Today we're going to be talking to comedy legend, the Fat Doctor. Let's get to it. Welcome to Clay Time in Basement Podcast Show, a show like no other. Wild over-the-top opinions from an angry, sagacious smoking living in the basement of a house he pays on, road comic father who is technically married and understandably frustrated. Here he is, Clay Miles. What's going on, family? How y'all doing? Thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate you being here. As you can see, we got some technical difficulties. I don't know what the hell is going on with my... There's no there, There's no damn overlays. I can't see no conversations. I can't see no... Okay, I, I'm starting to see stuff now. Hey, what's up, Carol? How you doing? Yeah, I'm late. I know. <laughs> hey, Doc, I can actually hear everything I'm saying over there. Over there. <laughs> Huh? I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting the feedback. For, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm late. <laughs> oh my God, I'm sorry, family. I had, I gotta tell you why I'm late. I gotta tell okay. y'all why I'm late because uh, I actually went through some stuff today, and because I love you, I got, I gotta actually be honest with you. Before I get to it, I gotta get to everything I, gotta, I normally get to. Damaged goods. I gotta give these guys a shout out. Thank you guys for uh, hooking me up. We actually uh, were supposed to go do some recording. Uh, this week, last weekend, I couldn't go because it was my birthday and I had a surprise birthday party thrown for me by my kids. So I could not go, but, uh, they turned out really great. They had a bunch of great things going on. Hopefully next time I can get in there with them. But, uh, also check out Daddy Issues. That's D-A-D-D-Y-I-S-S-U-E-Z dot Lipson dot com. Please check them out. That's the family. Also, the big dog, Clay Time in the Basement. And also, hey, uh, oh, hope all is well. Yeah, yeah, Carol, all is well. I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going I'm to tell you what happened, Carol. You know I'm going to tell you. And, of course, the merch. Check out the merch. Big Mo, I know you want to buy some. They actually have bigger shirts. You know what I mean? If you're a bigger person like me, you want to get a big size. My boy Mo wants to get a shirt. Get it at cafepress.com forward slash clay time in the basement. I got to actually promote my show. Here on Saturday, it's going to be uh, in these, uh, no, excuse me, Silver Springs, Maryland, at a place called uh, the uh, the Fire Station One. So I'm really excited about this. I thought it was just a showcase. Then they put my name on the flyer, like like I'm headlining. I guess I guess I'm getting paid. <laughs> no, I thought it was just a showcase, open mic type of thing. But hell, I, you know, I'll do, I do. I don't. I don't mind getting paid. <laughs> But uh, also, you know, I got my big show coming up here on the 18th of August. Please check that out. I actually named it after the show, Clay Time in the Basement Comedy Show. Uh, it's going to be at Club Heaven and Hell. That's uh, also in D.C. Go check that out. You got Xavier, who also pops his head on in the show a lot of times. He'll be there. Jillian Wills, Tom Mango will be hosting. Please check that out. All right, now, family, before we get before I get to who you came to see, the Fat Doctor. Now, let me tell y'all what happened to me. Now, the reason why we are going so late today is because I had an emergency. It's called a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to, I don't know whether you guys have heard about this or not. It's called the, the keto diet. And the thing that you don't understand about the keto diet is it takes, you take all the carbs out of your diet and then all you eat is like good fats. But what they don't tell you, at least you should maybe read, read further into it, is if you're doing right, 
you will shit uncontrollably. Now, the bad thing about this was I was at work in a meeting. And that meeting was about to be over. That meeting wasn't even over, but it was over for me. You know what I mean? You ever, you ever have an emergency where you like, fuck the world? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let me explain to you something. When I talk about emergency, I literally, if I would have shit my pants, understand that would have been the last day I would have been working at that job. I don't even care. I don't care about no basement. I ain't going back there. I ain't going to be the person everybody pointed to. That's the dude who shit his pants. No, it ain't going to be me. So I literally would have been living. It would have been clay time, not in the basement, clay time from his fucking car. I wouldn't have been in no goddamn basement on that one. But, uh, yeah, so that's why I was late because I was literally, I was shitting for like two hours. I ran home. <laughs> I spent an hour at work shitting. I came home. I still had more. I mean, have you ever shit so much that you wanted to stick your head up your own butt and say, that's enough? You're fired. You're fired. You, this is not the supp- way it's supposed to work. As you can see, I'm drinking electrolytes. <laughs> Damn. Ow. Oh my god. So yeah, that's 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 uh that's what is new with me. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't know if you guys can uh, hear or not, but uh, it is fat. Friday, normally it'd be Fat Tuesday, but today is Fat Fat Friday. We got the comedy legend. This guy has done it all. He's been he's been uh, teachers to the to the all the big name comics you've seen before. Dave Chappelle, Wanda Sykes. He is the number one comedy teacher. In the country, and, and I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you. Not a lot of people like whatever I say that people are like, are you serious? It is known. That's what he's known for. He's written on Martin's show, you name it. So I had to bring him back because everybody's been asking for him to come back. Uh please I can't say give it up because you I don't know there is no clapping over here. <laughs> they can still clap. They can clap. All right, would it please keep it going for the fat doctor? Keep it going. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. You the shit, man. Let me just put that out the way right now. You the shit. Literally. And I guess you wouldn't have wanted to go back to work because everybody been calling you the shit. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Oh, you me. Do you know where Clay Miles is? Oh, you mean the shit? Yeah. Oh, he's he right there. Right here. Oh. He, he must be very important around here if you call him the shit. Yeah, he's very important. He, he's the shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, he, it was literally. He came home and had the shit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Thank you, thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol, for climbing for Doc. We, we appreciate that. <laughs> well, when Mother Nature calls on the brown line, <laughs> Ain't nothing you can do but answer. That's it. Hey, hey, you know what, Doc? The fact, the funniest thing to me about it is, my my boss. I don't know whether I had the. I got a look. I got a shit face, like there was shit in my eyeballs. But I actually looked at him, and he looked at me, and he kind of like gave me that look, like, yeah, go, go, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, that's but, but, embarrassing. But I want to thank you for coming out uh, again. Doc, to uh, grace us with your with your presence, and uh, the reason why I love bringing Doc here, uh, family, is he teaches even when he's being funny. He teaches, and he has great stories, and it helps you in life. It helps you as a comedian. But I'm, I'm going to tell you know what. What's up? You know what? Um, I was going I was going to talk about how I got started in comedy. Um, I want to talk about something that just happened just yesterday. Um, I don't know if you heard about it yet, um, or it's got out to the media. Um, Pat Oswalt um, had a anniversary party mm. and a show, and it was all by invitation only. Okay. And there were four people that were supposed to be on the show, and he said he could not have the party and show without having the godfather, the fat doctor, on the show. Damn! So he said that. Now, I I got a call from his manager three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And they said to put the 18th, uh, mark that on your calendar. 
we're going to do something on the 18th. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I didn't think about it again. I marked it on my schedule. Yes, I did. And on Monday, uh, they said they they were going to send me an email and give me all the details. Yeah. But I got the first week, I got no email. Second week, no email. Third week, no email. I, I didn't get an email this week mm -hmm. at all. So yesterday, Wednesday, it was supposed to happen on Thursday. Yesterday, on Wednesday, I said, well, I guess they're not going to have it. Mm -hmm. So I made other plans. Uh, uh, I had some folks that were coming in from out of town. I told them, well, I haven't heard from, from Patton. Why don't y'all come on, stop by, whatever. So at 1.30 in the afternoon, I get a call from Patton Oswald's manager's office. <laughs> not, his, not his manager. Manager didn't call. But an assistant called and said, okay, I want to give you the details <laughs> for, for the anniversary bash tonight. Yeah, at 2 o'clock. <laughs> at 2 o'clock. <laughs> so I said... Um, as cordial as I could be, I said, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's two o'clock in the fucking afternoon. <laughs> what do you think? I'm right in D.C.? I live in fucking Richmond, Virginia. You're going to call me at two o'clock and tell me that there's going to be a party at 7 p.m. <laughs> Motherfucker, if I left out the door right fucking now, I would not make it. What the fuck is wrong with y'all, man? This is some bullshit because I've been waiting for quite a long time to get my peace with 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 uh, Pat and Oswald. Yeah. I've been carrying around a salty <laughs> taste in my mouth for Pat and for quite a long time. Now I love him. I really do love him. I don't don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I love him. But we haven't spoke since 1995. Okay, okay. We haven't spoke since 1995. Damn. And I'm going to tell you that story. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, when I got into L.A. back in 95, might have been 90, 94, I can't remember exactly what, what year it was. I believe it was 95. Um, and I was in town writing for the Martin Show. Mm hmm And... Um, I went to the Laugh Factory in uh, uh, in in L.A. and because I was I, my home club was the Comedy Store. That was my home club, mm -hmm. and it became my home club very quickly. Um, I, I performed on Richard Pryor night for my audition there, and Richard told me that, uh, and I, I'll say it in his words. He said, "You was a funny motherfucker." <laughs> You about the funniest motherfucker I ever seen in my life. No question, you the funniest fat motherfucker ever lived. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you something. If anybody try to tell you any different, you bring their ass to me. <laughs> now I ain't in no shape to kick nobody's ass, but I still got the money to have that shit done. <laughs> so I I just raised my hand like I scored a touchdown. That was a beautiful thing. So anyway. Let me let me skip ahead here. Now, outside of the uh, the Laugh Factory, there was a guy named Rick Messina. Yeah, I know who that is. Is a world famous manager. World famous manager. He he was a guy that had uh, he, he booked everything in New York City in the eighties, uh, going through the nineties. Mm -hmm. He booked everything. Mm -hmm. um, one time, I challenged him, and I said, I said, Rick. You keep bragging on how much work you got, man. I'm going to take two months off. And I bet you, you can't keep me working every day of the fucking week. Two months, man. I'm going to give you two months. He said, that's not enough. I said, that's bullshit. <laughs> I'm going I'm going to call you on that shit. Uh -huh. And I went up there to New York. And let me tell you, I, I always remember how many days it was. Uh-huh. It's 68, because 69 is my favorite number. <laughs> so, so, on the 68th day, Clay, 68 
fucking days in a row. 68. Damn. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. 68 days in a row. He called. I was I was staying with a friend of mine in uh in uh New York City, and um. Uh, I was staying with a friend of mine in New York City. Uh-huh. I, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on the radio right now. I'm on TV. I'm on all of that. <laughs> Are you coming over? Hello? Hello? I, I'm, I'm on TV right now. Are you coming over? Quickly, quickly. Where okay, come on hammering? over, sweetie. I'll Stop see you when you get it. hammering out there. Who's got a hammer? Uh, Where right. is it? Okay. So anyway. Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I, I you know I got bitches this for the drop through. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm just that type of motherfucker. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, uh, anyway, on the 68th day, he said, "Okay, are you ready for the gigs for the next two weeks?" I said, "Fuck no." Damn. If I do my act. One more fucking time, I'm going to shoot myself in the fucking head. I, I don't think I'll ever say good evening, how's everybody doing, ever again in my fucking life. I got thousands of dollars, I can't spend one fucking dime. You had me working 68 fucking days in a row, and I took two months off. Damn. I took, I took two months off. I was totally fucking exhausted. But anyway, me and Rick were very close, very close. Um, he, he worked me a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I won't go into detail all the places that he booked me. But anyway, um, I'm walking to the walking in the laugh factory and Rick Messina is standing there. Mm-hmm. And he said, fat doctor, what you doing, man? What you doing in town? You here? You working? What's going on? I said, yeah, man, I'm in town. I'm writing for the Martin show. He said, Martin Lawrence, yeah, man. Yeah, I remember you sent them up to me. I said, yeah, you sent them right the fuck back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that, man. But he needed more seasoning. And I said, yeah, and I gave it to him. I gave him some more seasoning. Uh, and before I could send him the fuck back, shit, he got the fuck to L.A. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, anyway. He said, uh, one of your boys is up here, and I just started managing him. I said, who is that? He said, Patton Oswald. I said, yeah, that's my man. I love Patton, man. What's going on with him? You got uh, Have you talked to him lately? He said, yeah, I talk to him all the time. Listen, I'm, I'm sure he'd love to talk to you. You want his number? I don't want shit here, man. <laughs> Give me his number, man. I would love to call him, man. You're damn right I called him, you know. <clears throat> yeah, I had taken him, you know. Uh, you know, I was the godfather for all y'all. You know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he had been on the road with me a few times. And, and I really, uh, uh, he was part of the Insanity family. He's one of my family, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm, his, I'm his comedy daddy. So anyway, <laughs> next day, I call up uh, Patton Oswalt. Now, Patton Oswalt, at this particular point, he hadn't done any TV other than Mad TV. Mm-hmm. He only had one one gig that was on Mad TV. He was a writer. Mm-hmm. He hadn't done TV. He hadn't done movies. He hadn't done none of that. Mm-hmm. Mad TV. Okay. At this particular point, I mean, I'm at I'm at the peak of my fucking career. I'm at the very peak. You know, uh, I, I'm I'm a regular at the comedy store. I'm being managed by Mitzi. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everybody's, you know, clamoring about the fat doctor and all the shit that I've done. Been all over the country three or four times. I, I've played the biggest clubs. I've, I've, I've played the biggest universities. Mm-hmm. I, I'm the shit. Not, not like you, but I am the shit. So anyway, I call up Pat Oswald and I say, Pat Oswald. He said, yeah, who is this? I said, fat doctor, man. What's going on, man? He said, fat doctor, how'd you get my number? I said, man, Rick Messina <laughs> gave it to me. Listen here, man. I heard you was in town and you're writing for Mad TV. This is what, what we're going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to give you the VIP treatment. You're going to come up uh, when we're shooting. 
I'm going to give you ten, ten, the, the 10 cent tour and let you meet everybody. Uh, it might be helpful to you in your writing career. Uh, meet the staff, the producers, so forth and so on. And then you can watch a taping, you know. And then you you invite me to Mad TV and you do the same for me. Mm-hmm. And he said, who gave you my number? <laughs> So I'm staring at the phone. I can't believe he just said that to me. Yeah. I, and I said, did you hear anything I fucking just said? You don't care about all of that shit. You, all you care about is who gave you my your fucking number? Are you serious? <laughs> are you really? Are you high right now? What the fuck is wrong with you? Not, not even mentioning my credentials, motherfucker. <laughs> But I am the writer of one of the hottest shows on television. Yeah. And one of my boys who is still under my fucking under my fucking wing is one of the top acts in fucking show business. (laughs) And you asking me, how did I get your number? (laughs) Motherfucker, you should be thanking me for calling your sorry ass. (laughs) Motherfucker, I tell you what. Rick Messina gave me the motherfucking number, but I will never use it again, and I'll see you in the funny papers, bitch. <laughs> Hung up. Really? Haven't spoke to him since. <laughs> oh, my God. Haven't spoke to him since. Not once. Wow. Since 95. Wow. Not once. Now, whenever uh, someone from, the, from uh, our family... Uh, has a uh, engagement with him, and he mentions the fat doctor. He speaks very highly of me, yeah, very highly, and he still gives me the same respect mm-hmm. that, as you do, as 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 most of the folks do, um, as as you were st- were still, you know, a young comic. You know, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. guys still give me that respect. You know, mm-hmm. I'm the I'm the old sage, and you're the young comic, even though all of you guys are. You know, you've come a long way and your headliners in your own right. Um, but you still give me the respect that I think that that is well warranted. Yeah. But not expected. I yeah. don't expect it, but it's well warranted. Mm-hmm. And it took me a while to even get to the point where I could accept it. You yeah. know, yeah. That, that I'm a motherfucking genius. I have to <laughs> have to accept I am a comedy genius. So I am. No, no, hold so on, anyway. Doc. I want I want to do. Uh... We actually talked yesterday, and you you told a story that uh, I want to get on tape because I, I love this story. Um, the story about you um, working with uh, Eddie Murphy on his on his special here in DC. Wow. Okay. Um, that was uh, that special was delirious, right? Yeah, that special was delirious. Mm-hmm. It actually was. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Comedy. Oh, that That's the name of the actual special. <laughs> yeah, that's the name of the actual special. Delirious. It was delirious, but that's the name of the special. Now, I don't I don't know if I should say this publicly, um, even though it's very true. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if I should really tell it publicly. Okay, well, which which I'm not one sure do you want? If which I one? Well, can you can you give us an edited version? Um, okay. Um, give us the give us not you know don't give us a top secret version. Just 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 you know. Well, in order for it to be juicy, I gotta tell. <laughs> in order for it to be juicy, because it is goddamn juicy. <laughs> now. I'm going to go ahead and tell it. I mean, who the fuck's going to really hear it? Come on. <laughs> I like that. Who the fuck are you, Clay? <laughs> I mean, who the fuck are we? I mean, really, come on. It's us, Clay. Who the fuck is really tuning in for us? Come on. Come on. I like, like, like I made a fucking difference on you. Hell no. I didn't <laughs> you might have lost some, some fucking listeners. <laughs> I don't know. 
Uh, I'm going to tell this story. Okay. And if Eddie Murphy ever wants to challenge me on it, he can challenge me on it. Um, but this is what happened. Um, back in the day, I used to work for Dimensions Unlimited. Mm-hmm. And Dimensions Unlimited, they were a production company, and they brought some of the biggest names in show business um, to the Washington, D.C. area. And off time, if you're a resident of Washington, D.C., you've been around for a while, you've heard Dimensions Unlimited. Mm. Brought to you by Dimensions Unlimited, you know, yeah. whoever it is, you know. Elton John, brought to you by Dimensions Unlimited. The Isley Brothers, <laughs> you know, whoever. <laughs> so I was lucky enough um, to for my management to get me in with Dimensions Unlimited. So I got to open up for a lot of people as a result of working with Dimensions Unlimited. You know, folks like, uh, uh, it come to mind, um, Smokey Robinson. Yeah. I got a great Smokey Robinson story. Uh, it's real quick. It's real quick. Okay. I got a great one. It's real quick. Um, <laughs> I'm opening up, <laughs> I had opened up for, for uh, Smokey Robinson like five times. This was my sixth time. Performing for him, Michael Michael we B. At, Sykes, uh, Michael G. B. Sykes. Want to excuse me, dog? Wanted to tell me that, tell you that you look good. So, Michael oh, B. Okay. Sykes. All right, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> man. Uh, I almost was, was uh, hanging out with Mike. I heard that uh, he was with uh, Tony Woods, and I couldn't get out there that evening to, to hang out with those guys. Okay. And I found out later that that he was there. I gotta right. have Tony. I gotta have Tony Woods on too one day. Well, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, tell the well, story. Good, good luck with that, man. <laughs> Make sure you tell him that your show starts <laughs> so he can be there by nine. Yeah, I, I'll have three three uh, guests before him just so so we'll have we can fill the time so when he comes, <laughs> we'll, we'll get he ain't gonna come. He ain't gonna come in the first ten minutes. That's for sure. No, no, exactly. No. That, that ain't gonna happen, man. All right. Thanks for coming out, Nikosi. I appreciate it, bro. <laughs> okay. All right. My man, Mike Sykes. Okay. But anyway. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So, anyway, uh, I'm opening for Smokey. I go, uh, we're at Merriweather Post Pavilion. And if anybody's been, been backstage, um, it, the backstage and the green rooms are downstairs. Okay. And when you go downstairs, um, there was a big living room, and it was a center point for all the green rooms. There were there were hallways all all the way around. It was in in the center, and there were hallways mm-hmm. uh, that led to green rooms. So this was the center, and um, when uh, when I went on, Smokey patted me on the back and went, "Go out there and you kill him, man." <laughs> You kill him. I'm going to be checking you out. I was like, okay, cool. You know, because Smokey is smooth, motherfucker. Yeah, you know? yeah. And he had that voice like, kind of like this, you know. <laughs> you're going to kill him, man. I know you're going to kill him. I was like, all right, you smooth, motherfucker. Let me, let me get up here and do my thing. So, because I, I think he, he, he would actually do five minutes of material. Oh, really? Yeah, he would. He would. And, and I'll tell you about that, too. But anyway, uh, after I come off stage, I was used to Smokey being there because he was he was really a fan of mine. Oh, wow. And I was used to him being there and he would shake my hand, give me a hug and tell tell me how funny you so. He's so damn funny. I love having you on my show, man. All right. Now, let me take over. Let me see if you left something for me. I was man, Get the fuck out of here, man. They came to see your ass, <laughs> but he wasn't there. Uh. Okay, so uh, I went downstairs, and back in those days, um, just like you know, the eighties, early nineties, um, there were everyone didn't have cell phones. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the center living room of the green room areas. There were phones all along, all on the perimeters, mm-hmm. uh, next to couches or next to chairs. 
So you could use the phone. I mean, you could call long fucking distance. They didn't give a shit. Wow. I mean, you know, <clears throat> it's not, not like, like, not like a motherfucker say, all right, don't, don't call. They didn't give a shit. You could call anywhere in the fucking world. They didn't care. Yeah. They're, make, they're making stupid money. So anyway, as I'm coming downstairs, I hear this voice of some brother that was pissed the fuck off. <laughs> and as I'm coming down the stairs, bitch did not tell you not to be calling me over and over and over. <laughs> I gave you the motherfucking number in case there's a motherfucking emergency, bitch. Now I have to stop what the fuck I'm doing for you to ask me, how's it going? <laughs> Are you out of your fucking mind? I should Beat the shit out of you. <laughs> when I see you, I'm going to slap the shit out. And as I'm walking up closer, I notice that it's Smokey Robinson. <laughs> God damn. And then he, he's on the phone like this. He's on the phone. Yeah, bitch. Don't let me have to tell you that shit no motherfucking more. <laughs> and have your motherfucking clothes off. When I get there, I'm going to fuck the shit out of you when I get the fuck back. Click. And he turns to me. He goes, Oh, hey, fat guy. Yeah. Oh, he was a man. Man, man, man. And he gave me a, you gonna stay for the show? Yeah, I'm gonna stay for the show. But I heard you, motherfucker. I heard you. What do you mean, brother? What do you mean? I heard you, man. You a hardcore thug, man. Oh, no. That's not true at all, brother. That's not true. Sometimes, you know, the bitches get on my nerves. <laughs> my take a little tone with, Nah, you a hardcore thug, motherfucker. <laughs> Come here, hug me, motherfucker. I'm on your side. Don't hurt me now. Don't oh. hurt me. Oh, that's, oh, I, let, I want to interrupt you, but let, let's want to let you know Marcus Brown. I'm, I don't, you, you remember Marcus Brown? Marcus Brown? Yeah. Marcus Brown. Yeah. You, believe me, you know Marcus Brown. He, he went, we went by doo doo. He did what? He went by Doodle when he first started. Doodle Brown, but Marcus oh, Brown. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, he, yeah, he wanted, he wanted, he wanted to tell you. He said, "Fat Doctor doesn't know what he did for me and so many others." So he wanted to yeah, say I thank see you. That man, what's up, my man? I was trying to think, who the fuck is Marcus Brown? Oh, Pamela yeah, Fernandez. Man, I'm you, Doodle Brown. Do you remember Pamela? Pamela Fernandez. Pamela from Fernandez. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, she was a manager. I think she's actually ma managed some comics. Oh man, I can't recall right offhand. I met I, her. I met her back in the day. I met her man. back in the day at a. Uh, oh wow! I, I I recognize her picture. Yeah. 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 I know. We almost had a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going her like right on right. Boy. Yeah, she's I didn't, bad. I didn't quite close the deal. <laughs> Yeah, she she's bad. I saw her at was that Club Elite? What was that when they had the club, the the comedy club at the the bottom? Was that Club Elite? And it closed up in um. Uh, God, yeah, yeah, Ab absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember her fine ass. <laughs> yeah, I was out there, and, and we flirted pretty good back. In the day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, it's got to be hard. It's got to be hard to be to be a, a manager when you look that good and you deal with comics. That's, oh yeah, I that, know she was hit on all the. Time. All the she had to be. She had to, no question about it. She's a beautiful lady. Yeah, man. she was fine. She was about her work too, man. Yeah. All right, baby. Good to good to have you listening, yeah. watching. Yeah, thank you for love coming you, out, baby. Pamela. Appreciate it. Yeah, I still want some of them cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right, baby. And yeah, this, yeah. this went from Clay Time in the Basement to Love Connection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy. All right, all right, Doc. Now, now, okay. now, get, well, now anyway. let's get back to the, to, the, to the Eddie Murphy story. Okay, all right. Okay. So, um, Dimensions Unlimited calls me. Mm -hmm. And they say... Um, we got something very important to talk to you about. And can you come down to the office? I said, wow, can I come down to the office? 
man, y'all must have a contract for me. And he said, yes, we do. Mm. I went, well, shit, I'd be there in 20 minutes, motherfucker. <laughs> so, so 20 minutes later, I'm, I'm at the office and I go right in. And um, two of the guys that was part, part of the head of, of Dimensions Unlimited, the two top guys were there. And usually I don't see two top guys. Mm-hmm. I can see one top guy. Mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> I, I was just looking at the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, I knew you were. <laughs> it's like, all right, yeah. motherfucker, this ain't my show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right. But anyway, anyway. So anyway, um, I came in and I went, damn, did I do something wrong? What the fuck? Uh, is the FBI coming in behind me? What the fuck is going on up here? And they said, no, nah, sit down. This is great news. Great news. Um, are you familiar with Eddie Murphy? Oh, you mean the guy that started 48 hours and was a phenomenon on Saturday Night Live? Yeah, I think I've heard of him. Who the fuck hasn't heard of him? <laughs> Eddie Murphy, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, you know, back then, it was 48 Hours is still in the fucking movie theaters, man. Yeah. Of course I know who he is, man. Mm-hmm. Um, they said he's going to be doing a special here at Constitution Hall. Mm-hmm. I said, really? They said, yeah, he's going to be doing a special. And they said, we would like for you to open for him. Wow. Hey, Doc. <laughs> oh, what, what? But anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. For some reason, my Siri just jumped in. I don't know what the fuck that's like. I got the brand new iPad. Yeah. And all you have to do is, is say, uh, well, I can't say it. If I say the word and say Siri. Yeah. Uh, It'll jump right in. Yeah, but anyway, uh. <laughs> anyway, they said, we would like for you to open for Eddie Murphy. Damn. And I went, really? You'd like for me to open for Eddie Murphy? They said, yes. Now, before we can have you sign this contract, what we need for you to do, we need for you to get a tape to Eddie Murphy's people. Mm-hmm. You have to do this. If you want this gig, get your manager to get with his management and get him a tape. Now, the thing about it is that he's not getting a tape to okay you, but he wants to Peru. We told him about you. Mm. We told him about you, and we want you to be the one. And we've already uh, got the contract. Uh, Everything is ready to go, but you have to get a tape to him, okay? So my manager got a tape to Eddie Murphy's people mm. because even though I wasn't going to be on the special, I would be performing in front of the audience that he would have to have to perform in front of after me. Yeah. So he wanted to peruse my material mm. and make sure that I wasn't using subject matter close to what he was using. Yeah. So I said, that makes sense. And if it's anything um, that he sees that would be too close to his material, he'll ask you not to do that. Yeah. You're only going to do 20 minutes, mm-hmm. 15 to 20. <clears throat> um, I said, well, you know, I could send him my hour and, um, you know, get that to him. So anyway, my manager did that and got this to him. Um, a week later, they said, come on down. And um, sign a contract. Mm. So I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. Very excited. Uh, I'm going to be opening up for Eddie Murphy. I'm not going to be on the special, but there will be a credit. Yeah. Uh, opening at the Fat Doctor. I was yeah. like, damn, this is pretty. This is pretty cool. And you know, I'm going to be hot again yep. for opening up somebody for somebody big. Mm-hmm. So everybody in DC will know about it. And, you know, will add to my popularity. So I'm pretty excited about it. Okay. Now, um, the week of, this was like a, on a Tuesday, and I believe uh, the uh, gig was on a Thursday, I believe. Mm-hmm. On Tuesday, 
Dimensions Unlimited calls me and says, um, we need to talk to you. I said, oh, shit. Mm. And they said, well, we got to talk to you in person. I went, oh, fuck. Mm. Okay. And, and they said, it's not that bad, though. Not that bad. Okay. So I get down there. They say, okay, listen. Eddie Murphy has decided to have this band called the Bus Boys. Mm. He's flipped over them. Yeah. And not only are they going to open the movie, for right? him, they're going to actually be on the special. They were in the movie, right? 48 Hours. In the movie 48 yeah. Hours, yes. Okay. He loved them, okay? <clears throat> and he wants them to open up for him and not only open up, but they're actually going to be seen on the special. He's just, he's just flipped over. Yeah. He just loves these guys, loves the music. <laughs> um, he's been been jamming with them, so forth and so on. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Eddie's been in the music for a long time. Yeah. But anyway, I said, wow. So I'm not going to get the gig. He said, well, you're not going to get the gig, but we already signed a contract. And here's a a thousand dollars, which you were going to get paid. Um, uh, you were going to get well. Actually, they said you've already got a five hundred dollar deposit, mm-hmm. and here's the other thousand that you're going to get on the night of the show. Mm-hmm. And Eddie Murphy has sent you another fifteen hundred. Damn. I said really. He said yeah. He said um, <clears throat> he knows um, how it is. And not often do you get paid leave as a stand-up comic. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, you know, that he was very sorry that uh, I couldn't open for him. But um, hopefully I'll come out to the show and lend his lend support. And here's another $1,500. So I walked out of Dimensions Unlimited not having done a show. And I had twenty five hundred dollars. Damn, damn. And I was like, damn, this is this is my career. This this didn't turn out too bad, right? No. Okay, so um, I didn't go to the taping of the sh- of Delirious. Um, I got a gig actually. Mm. So on top of me making that twenty five hundred, mm. I made another fifteen hundred for a weekend that I worked. Yeah. So, cause I, I did a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, so I couldn't, couldn't be there for, for the taping. So anyway, about five months later, five months later, um, I'm watching TV and Greg Poole calls me. Okay. And the Greg judge. will back me up. I'm saying Greg Poole cause <laughs> he's going to have to back me up on it. <laughs> Greg Poole calls me up and he says, he says, turn on HBO, 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 turn, hurry, 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 <laughs> turn on HBO, hurry, 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 hurry. And I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm fiddling with the, the controller. I'm going, oh my God, what is it? Big titties? What the fuck is it, man? What, what am I looking at? What am I looking for? So I finally get the HBO and it, that not, not two. But one, okay, fuck, okay, I'm getting there. Okay, all right, boom. And it's Eddie Murphy. And he's he's doing Mr. T. My closing bit. Oh, hell no. Oh. Now, That's let me tell the- you what was so ingenious about this. He wrote a new opening and a better close. Oh. So the motherfucker took... The bulk of my Mr. T. You look good in them jeans, boy. <laughs> Come on over, bend over, let me let me fuck your ass. <laughs> fuck being an ass. I'm gonna clench my my I'm gonna clench my butt muscles up and it'll rip your dick off. <laughs> I been in the fool that wanna fuck Mr. T. I been in the fool, but anyway, so my my mouth has dropped. And I'm like, are you shitting me? So that's why he paid me. He paid me for the bit. For the bit, yeah. He paid me for the bit. Wow. And I was like blown away. And I had to do a gig at the Ibex Club. I think I was talking to you about the Ibex. Mm -hmm. At the Ibex Club. 
and I had a midnight show, and I slipped into the Mr. T because I had been doing it for almost a year. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, actually, actually, I started out doing a Mr. T impression during the open mic days, and I was about eight, seven, eight years in, mm. and I've been doing Mr. T for a while, and I slipped into it. Um, at the end of my set, and I went, damn, what the fuck am I doing? And everybody was quiet mm. while I was doing it. And then somebody yelled out, hey, that's Eddie Murphy. Oh, oh fuck. fuck. And I just didn't know what the fuck to say, and I went, y'all ain't shit. I'm going to have to go. <laughs> fuck y'all, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I said, I, say, I got a cab waiting outside. And, and it's a motherfucking fair in the back seat. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to get the fuck out of here. So, so now check this out. There's a a part two to this. Okay. Um, Eddie Murphy was in a a movie called Boomerang. Yeah. Boomerang. Martin Lawrence was in this movie. Yep. Now you know the history of me and Martin. I mean, you know. He was very close to me. I mean, you know, sometimes I come in off the road with groceries. He opened my apartment door, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because my wife would let him in. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, um, Martin says, I'm going to be filming Boomerang, uh, some scenes, outdoor scenes in New York. And <laughs> when he told me the date, I said, well, that's cool. Because I'll be working Dangerfields and a few other clubs uh, during that two-week period. Mm-hmm. He said, well, come on out to the set, man. I said, okay, I'll come out to the set. Now, it was outdoors. And I, I believe it was the scene. It was a scene where um, Eddie was outside. And it was his scene. He was looking for a dog or something. And um, everybody had, had various... Oh shit! Uh, hold on, sweetie. H- hold on a second. Uh, you know the bitches, man. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, I, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm standing behind the barricade, uh-huh. and Martin ro- runs over to me. Right? He goes, "Oh man, man, I'm glad you came, man. Oh man, I want you and Eddie to meet, man. Uh, I want you and Eddie to meet." And I was like, yeah, man, that'd be cool. I would love to meet Eddie Murphy. <laughs> that, that would be grand if I met Eddie Murphy. So he was trying to get Eddie to come over, and he was grabbing him. Yo, man, I want you to come over and meet. And then he, he'd look at me, and he'd go, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to be right back. And he'd go, you know. And then he grabbed him again, and he go, "Come on, man! I want you to meet the fat dog." Okay, in one minute, I'll be there in one minute, seriously. <laughs> and he goes, and then finally, he grabbed him one time, and pulled me, pulled him over to me. I had changed my position, yeah. And it kind of startled him, right? Because he pulled me over to another part of the crowd, and he went, "Yeah, man, I want you to meet the fat doctor." And he looked, he went. Oh yeah, man! I know the fat doctor, man. He's the fat doctor. We real close, man. I love the fat doctor, man. He's one of my funny. He's a funny motherfucker. Hold on, man. I'll, I'll be right back. I never seen him again. I never seen him direction, and he could not look me in the face. He couldn't oh, look me in the face. That is great. But I mean, what was I going to do? I mean, he was like the biggest thing in in, in show business. And him and Martin together, you know, uh, they were definitely box office draws. Yeah. Uh, I mean, who is who the fuck was I going to tell? And and if I tell anybody, this is the first time that t- I've told this publicly, but I have no beef with him. Yeah. But he paid me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he took took the idea, and and I don't know if he particularly stole it, mm-hmm. you know, because anybody could have viewed the tape and went, you know what, Eddie, you should do a Mr. T, man, Mr. Yeah. T if he was gay, mm-hmm. and they could have told him some bits and pieces of it, and he, and Eddie go, hmm, 
Yeah, I think I can work with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mr. T being gay. Now, um, if he ever said that he wrote the thing, I couldn't even argue with him. Mm-hmm. You know, because it was, it was not the same as what I did, but um, it was too much of a, of a similarity for me to get away with doing it. Yeah, yeah. His now. Yeah. Okay, so I'm putting that out there just in case Eddie uh, was, was. I don't say, think you got to worry about Eddie Murphy. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna this thing. And I just ran with the motherfucker. Yeah. I ain't steal shit. Fuck that. He's gonna be talking about Clay Time on on, uh, on the Late Show. Let me tell you about this goddamn Clay Time. No, that that, that ain't gonna happen. I, I don't think it'll get back to him. <laughs> But that's definitely going to be in my book, man. Oh yeah, it needs to be. It really, that really needs. Now, now I was told that on the road that if you ever work with like, you know, I hate to talk bad of the dead, but if you ever work with like Robin Williams, if he says to you, "I'm going to pay you for that bit," I was always told take the money because he already took it. Yes, that's absolutely true, man. <laughs> uh, one time, uh, I, I got a couple of stories about Robin. Um, um, I used to think that he was the most brilliant, off the cup, improvisational comic that I've ever seen in my life. Most people thought that. Now, he did have that in him, mm-hmm. but he was a genius at having the audience lead him into material. Mm. And I didn't, oh shit. I got somebody at the fucking door. Are you still there, baby? <laughs> yeah, wait a minute, hold up, hold up. Okay, yeah, no problem, no problem. Hold on, can, can, uh, just hold yeah, on. Let's I'm live, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm live. I, I, I'm, I'm live. live. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That's what happens when you go live, family. But anyway, I got something to talk to y'all about. Before y'all, before y'all go, I wanted to talk about this motherfucker right here. Now, this dude actually got tattoos all over his body. He actually tattooed himself that color, family. I don't, I don't understand it. Not only did he, did he do that, the reason why he's laying in that bed is because he got his dick and balls cut off because it got in the way. Yeah, it got in the way of his tattoos that he wanted to do. Now, my question is, why is she holding his hand? She ain't never going to fuck him again, so that's just pussy for somebody else. Uh, Oh. (laughs) And we're back. Hold on a sec, Doc. Hold on. I got it. I'm live, y'all. I'm, 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 I'm live. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm live. Just give me a second. Okay. I'm like, what? Damn right. it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, man. Uh, you know how it is. You know. Be the fat guy. <laughs> Women, man. They just, you know, they want to be hanging with me. Is that old girl? Tell us what's up. <laughs> no, nah, it's not her, man. Oh, oh. <laughs> you mean my sister? Yeah. No, it's not my sister. Oh, okay. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, okay. Uh, oh, how much time do I have? Shit. Yeah, we got. We're gonna, gonna do about five show. more minutes. We got. We got about five more minutes. Really? Did I take up the whole fucking hour? Yeah, but it was great. We had a great time. It, it flowed. It was good. It's okay. Fuck, man. No, you're fine. I have to. Um, I have to do the story of when I started next time, man. Okay. What was I in the middle of talking about? Oh man, let's see if we can go in reverse. <laughs> Hold on, what is this? It's a commit. That's a commitment. Okay, people are just writing about what I was talking about. We got time. Look, Carol says we got time. <laughs> Carol, Carol, we would, if there's up to Carol, we would just do clay time every day, twenty four hours wouldn't stop. Carol, Carol's a clay time addict. I love her. I love oh, her. Carol is awesome. Carol is a rider. But uh, we were talking about Robin Williams and. Um, oh yeah, Robin yeah. Williams. Okay. Um, I was an extra on a set called um, uh, Father's Day, I think it was, mm. with Robin Williams and Billy Crystal was in this movie. 
There's a cushion. No cushion? No, I fell off. I was going to grab it a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, I was one of the extras, and there was an outdoor scene where a rock band was playing. Mm-hmm. And there was some type of uh, some type of uh, uh, technical problem, and we were out there, and it was getting cold. It was night, and Robin came out there and did like an hour. Wow! Just incredible, mm-hmm. absolutely incredible. Then I got a chance to see him perform again uh, live, just for a few minutes. And he was using some of the same uh, lead-ins mm. that I thought was all off the top of his head. Mm-hmm. And that taught me how to work a crowd. Mm. Because you don't have to necessarily be quick-witted and on your on your feet if you know how to turn the... the uh, turn whatever the audience response is to where you want it to go. Mm. You know, it's like I, I, you can do that. And I teach my, my students to do that when they're on the radio. Mm. Mm-hmm. I teach them how to control the situation by no matter what it is that someone asks you, mm-hmm. you can turn it into whatever material you want to, to talk about. So, in other words, you're teaching them to segue. Well, no, it's, it's more than segue. Mm. It's actually um, it's actually leading people without them knowing that they're being led. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, just like uh, just like I could say to you, uh, Clay. Um, so, so how have you been doing, man? I'm all right. And you, you're okay. Uh, and then that would lead you to say. Oh, I'm I'm doing good. How you doing? Oh man, let me tell you, man. I'm tired of being fat, man. <laughs> That's how I'm doing, man. <laughs> People always pick on me just because I'm two, three hundred pounds overweight. You know what I'm <laughs> I was in a restaurant alone. The waiter pulled out two chairs. I said, "What's the meaning of this?" He said, "The piano bench is occupied." Now sit your butt right there. Now see, all I did was was lead you into where I wanted you to go. Yeah. And um, uh, let, me, let me finish that a little bit. Okay. Uh, I was in the country, right? I'm riding along in the country because I wanted to clear my head. Because people are always picking on me because I'm fat, right? <laughs> so I'm riding in the country. I'm driving along. Everything's wonderful. Everything's beautiful. And I'm in the slow lane. And somebody pulls up beside me. And the lady rolls down a window. And she yells out, pig, 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 pig. <laughs> So I'm rolling down my window because I'm going to tell this bitch off. And I hit a pig. (laughs) (laughs) Guess I'm a little bit too self-conscious, huh, baby? A little bit too self-conscious. That's what it is. Oh, man. Hey, Marcus wanted to know about the book. He he wants to know the name of the book. Oh, man. I, I haven't finished it. The name of the book is called The Memoirs of the Fat Doctor. It only takes one gunshot. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, because comedy saved my life. I could have just, just had it, uh, comedy saved my life, but I, I think it's more dramatic. It only takes one gunshot. Yeah. That's, yeah. Man, that, that's definitely, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, you have to write something that will catch their, you know, their feelings and, yeah, cause I would it only takes fuck. one gunshot. Yeah. <laughs> comedy and gunshot. Damn. Drop the and mic. Please. We don't have time for that story. Yeah. Um, but maybe I could tell it next time. Yeah, please, please come back. Like I said, you you are always welcome. So All right. So if we're going to do that on Thursdays, man, I'll, I'll carve out some time, you know, like I did for Pat and Oswald. <laughs> <laughs> I'll carve out some time, man. And hopefully uh, you won't get in touch with me three minutes before. <laughs> you know what, man? We're not even going to have the show, man. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> then, you, then you call me back 10 minutes later and go, all right, we started 10 minutes ago. Are you ready? Yeah, where are you the at? Fuck? <laughs> what the bullshit is that, man? What is this, Pat Oswald people? What kind of shit is this? Oh, look, you got a standing ovation. Oh, wow, cool. Uh, of course, from Carol. <laughs> 
All right. All right, Fat Doc. Man, I, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. Much love, big brother. I love you so much. It's been amazing right. as usual and, and much, informative. Much, much love, man. You know I love you. And thanks for everybody that, that tuned in. I had a ball and hopefully we'll make this, uh, uh, we'll make this into a habit. Yeah, well, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. All right, see y'all next time. See you in the funny papers. Stop the hammering. Stop the hammering out there. Who's got a hammer? <laughs> Stop the Where hammering. Is it? Where's the hammer? Is it on the other? Go up on the other. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for, for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. I got to go ahead and give a shout out to my boys, Damaged Goods, who actually hooked me up. They got, got me to doing this podcasting. Uh, please check them out. Damagedgoods.lipson.com. Please check them out there. Also, Daddy Issues, that's D-A-D-D-Y-I-S-S-U-E-Z, dot Lipson dot com. Also, of course, check out me, Bam. Now, this podcast is out actually going to gonna be, goods hey, I can hear that, Doc. <laughs> I can hear all that. <laughs> uh, please check out Damage Goods. But, uh, please, I don't know whether you guys can hear that. Doc's literally just rounding me out right now. I can hear all that. I can hear me through your thing. I can hear me. I don't know if y'all just can hear me like, through him. Yeah, thanks, Doc. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, guys, in my show on the 18th, please check this muted, out. Man. Please check this out on the 18th. I got a show on August 18th. Please check that out. And then uh, I love you guys. Thank you guys for hanging out through all the, the messed up. Yeah, we hear the playback live. I know. I, I, know. I was trying to tell Doc. I know. Look at Pamela. Thought, now she's talking I shit. That, I thought now, I was look, now, what, 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 what do you put? But yeah, I can hear it and you. I know, I know, I know, Pamela. I know, I know. We're gonna make, we're gonna get that down better next time. He's just gonna jump off, so we don't have to worry about going back and forth. I love y'all. Okay, I know you see everybody's laughing and shit. Fuck y'all. <laughs> Clay time three D. That's bullshit. Oh, they was hearing the playback. Yeah, oh, we, we can still hear you, Doc. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I'm here. I thought you had music. <laughs> <laughs> All right, family, I love y'all. And remember, this is it. This, this, no, no, you ain't on camera no more. You ain't, you ain't on camera no more. I love y'all. I will talk to y'all okay, later. Good. Every Thursday at 530. Check me out. I love y'all. Talk to y'all later. Out. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, man. I thought you muted me out, man. So, now I am so sorry. Guys, walk back in your I thought I was muted. Those destructive opinions back in your emotional lockboxes and put your politically correct <laughs> ass back on. Possible denial is recommended and good alibis are suggested. If called upon to testify in a congressional hearing, I don't know you and you don't know me. If Ooh, talking to his fine lines appeals to you, find him on Twitter <laughs> at Clay yeah, TV that was crazy. and Facebook that was crazy. page, Clay Time in Facebook Podcast Show. Thanks for listening. Go take a bath. You need to wash this off.